Now we discuss the bacterial plasmids as a cloning vectors. Uh, we are going to focus on phage vectors in next topic, especially the use of bacteriophage lambda as a cloning vector. Bacteriophages are those viruses that have the ability to infect bacteria like E. coli. Because they have the ability to infect E. coli, they are also called as the coliphages. And one of the famous example is uh, bacteriophage lambda. Bacteriophage lambda has the ability to infect E. coli by inserting its genomic DNA. If we have a look on the genetic map of lambda genome, we will find that uh, it is approximately the size of 48.5 kilobases. And naturally, if we isolate it from uh, the lambda phages, mostly it is present in linear duplex form. And at the five prime ends at both sides, either it is the right side or the left side, five prime projections are present that are unpaired. So these unpaired projections, they are complementary with each other. So uh, they, uh, when they enter into the uh, host bacterium, this complementary base pairing can join with each other and uh, the genomic DNA of lambda phages, they can assume a circular form. So more or less they may be closely related with the plasmids. In addition to these coarse or cohesive ends of bacteria at five prime end, the right side of the linear duplex DNA molecule it contain uh, some essential genes that are uh, involved in the biosynthesis of the head and tail components of the viruses. And the right side of the linear duplex DNA molecule, it contains some essential genes that are required for cell lysis, DNA replication, and uh, immunity to super infection. Immunity means that uh, if you have the idea that when uh, lambda phages infect uh, the E. coli, then there are two uh, possibilities that they may be virulent phages that can cause the cell lysis immediately and in some uh, other cases they may be temperate and can enter into lysogenic phase where the genome of the lambda phage it can integrate with the uh, host genome and replicate with it. So if prophage is already there, then the infection by an other phage particle, it is prevented and it is called as immunity to super infection. And there is another portion of the lambda genome, which is central, that is present between the right, uh, right and uh, left portion of the uh, genome. The central portion, uh, it contains some genes that may be required for recombination or lysogenization and these are not required for the survivability of the lambda phage. And this central portion, it can be removed and can be replaced with foreign DNA. So because of this trait, lambda phages can be uh, used as a cloning vector. Now briefly we can have a look on the genetic map of the bacteriophage lambda. As I told you that the right end and the left end, which you can call it as the five prime end, they are cohesive end because uh, they contain the single stranded overhangs. And when bacteria will inject its genome, the cohesive ends, because of complementary base pairing, they can join together and the genome, which is once linear, it can assume the circular form. Then on the left side, some genes are required that are essential one for the head and tail components of the phage particles. And then on the right side, some other genes that are required for the host cell lysis and then some late function regulation genes are there, genes for the duplication of the DNA 
and immunity to super infection and some other important genes are required for the integration and recombination. So the genes on the right and left side they are the essential one. Whereas the DNA fragment are the component that is present between the J gene and the N. It is non-essential. So this non-essential region it can be removed and can be replaced with the foreign DNA. And because of this trait, this phage DNA, it can be used as a vector. This diagram, it indicates that how we can replace the non-essential region with the foreign DNA. Suppose this is the genome of bacteriophage lambda. Right or the left side, they are essential whereas this non-essential central region it can be replaced or removed after digestion with restriction and nucleases. And then after removing this, we can get two essential fragments of phage DNA that can be joined with the foreign DNA. In the next step, if foreign DNA it is joined, then there may be different possibilities. The one possibility is that the DNA fragments that are produced after ligation, they will be small in size. Like here, if they are small in size, then one of the selectable marker is that uh, the smaller or the larger DNA fragments, they will not be packaged in the phage particle that we are going to discuss. And if they are appropriate size, then it is followed by in vitro packaging and finally we will get a recombinant phage particles. Now we have the idea that phage DNA contain non-essential region where we can incorporate our foreign uh, DNA. So uh, because of uh, uh, a few important features of the uh, lambda genome we can use it as a vector. One feature is that about one third central region uh, it is non-essential and can be replaced with the foreign DNA. And second important feature is that it can package only 4,000 to 53,000 base pairs uh, during the uh, packaging process. So the DNA fragments smaller than 40,000 base pairs are larger than 53,000 base pairs. They are not packaged. So only the DNA fragments having the length of 53 base pairs maximum they can be packaged and produce viable phages. So this constraints of uh, DNA length it can be used as a, uh, a cloning vector. So what we can do we can ligate our foreign DNA or ligation ke baad essential fragments ke saath isko in vitro packaging karwai jati hai. In vitro packaging ke liye zaruri hai ki hum bacterial crude extracts dein jisme sare vital protein components ho usse kya hota hai ki jo recombinant DNA hai ye phage particle mein je package ho jayega aur after packaging it is ready to infect host organism like the E coli.